Here we are on the Make It Happen Network with strategy number four, never, never, never quit. And Dallas, they say that quitters never win and winners never quit. So what is it with this quit thing that makes it so tough for people to get ahead if they quit? Well, Ridge, most of the time when people quit, if they are really shooting for a goal in life, most of the time when they quit, they're right on the abyss of accomplishing that goal. They're right on the abyss of the success of that. I've seen so many people, and I'll use business as an example, that are in business that go through those first few years, mm -hmm. first year, first two, sometimes three, where they're struggling some and there's, there's cash crunches and all that type of thing, and they just give up. Mm. And they were right at the verge of going over the edge, over the top, and then starting to have a profitable business. But they gave up. Mm -hmm. When I was reading here recently some of the most successful business entrepreneurs that we knew, one of them happened to be Donald Trump in an in, in a expose of things that I was reading. And his point was, if I was asked about one thing next to character, that I feel like that has helped me with my success, he says that it is that I'm indomitable. I'm indomitable. They, they, I think he created that word. I, <laughs> but tenacious. He, he, he said, I just won't give up. Mm -hmm. If I set my focus on something, if I set my eyes, I will not give up. Mm -hmm. Winston Churchill said it in a speech, as we all know, never, never give up. And he had a, a few other things he said, and he sat down. Because the quitting right before the success obviously is what causes so many people not to reach their goal and you will never know whether you're going to reach it unless you continue to push it to the very end mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. you have to be committed to not only trying but doing it to the very end and carrying that all the way out so why do people quit i think that in addition to the losing hope in what it is they're doing, I think it's that a lot of people just either don't believe in themselves or believe in what it is that they're doing. Rich, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people in life that haven't been or haven't taught themselves the discipline of believing in themselves and being disciplined in general in life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people will quit so many times right before they accomplish something they should have. And they'll go from thing to thing to thing to thing. I've seen people do that. Just go from one career to the other, one thing to the other, one, one deal to the other, and never carry one all the way to the very end. And then wonder why they don't have what it is that they need to have in life or the things that they want in life. It's because they're not willing to carry it to that very end, carrying it all the way through. And it takes that tenacious. It takes persistence. It takes determination. But all of these words we're throwing out, whether they're created or not created, all these words we're throwing out, they all go together in a puzzle, and they're all common denominators, all common denominators of those people that have made it to that other side. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. And you ask anyone who has started something from scratch, that has done something great, or that has accomplished anything in their life worth accomplishing, and ask them if there wasn't a time in their life they wanted to quit. I will tell you right now, almost every one of them, if not every one of them, will say, absolutely. Well, then what's the difference between those who do quit and those who don't? I mean, there obviously has to be some kind of common thread between the quitters and the non-quitters, and there has to be some difference. What's the difference? What's the thing that makes a person say, I am not one of those quitters, and this other person say, eh, not worth it? Oh, Reg, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to answer it with one word, and then I'll explain it. Hunger. And I'm not talking about the hunger in your belly. I'm talking about the hunger in your heart. Those people that are really hungry, that are hungry for what it is that they want, that are hungry for that vision, for that goal, for that change, for whatever it is they're trying to get in life, they will not give up because they don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go back where they were before. But you take a person who's comfortable in life, who pretty much has what they need to have, 
and they venture out and they try a few other things and they don't work or they don't seem to be working, I don't have anything. I'll just quit that. I tried it. I quit it. I'll go on to something else. They don't have the same hunger behind them, the same passion behind them. They do not. And you and I have talked about it before. Good is an enemy to great. Mm-hmm. If, I'm, if everything is good in life, it becomes an enemy to me accomplishing something great in life. Because at that point you have virtually no hunger. That's correct. Right? Because good means full belly. That's correct. Hmm. So what can we do to fuel the hunger, to get ourselves a little bit empty in the belly, if you will, so that we really want to go after it? Well, Rich, I, I can't obviously tell you what every person has to do individually because everybody is an individual. And there's some people that just won't get hungry no matter what you do. But we can lay out all the strategies, we can lay out the plans, we can lay out the things you need to do to be able to accomplish that. But you have to be, as a student, willing to absorb that and learn that. One of the things that I would say in order to get somebody's hunger where it needs to be, in addition to the fact that many times people have to lose things to understand what that hunger is. And I don't want people listening to do that. I don't. But it takes that a lot of times with people. But if a person can ever discover, and I keep going back to that because it's part of our mission statement, discover what it is that they really love. And 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 I'll ask it in the question this way. If you had all the money in the world and money wasn't a factor, or you could do anything you wanted to do and you were guaranteed not to fail, but they told you you can only choose one thing, what would that one thing be? Mm Mm-hmm. If I were told by somebody, a a genie in a bottle, you can go after anything you want in life and I will not let you fail, but you've only got one thing, Mm. what would that be? That is truly what your passion is. Right. And so when we're clear, we get our passion, yet we run into obstacles. Yes, sir. I mean, there are things that are going to, waylay us along the journey toward that passion what do when I hit that obstacle and it smacks me hard Mm -hmm. what do I tell myself to not quit right then well I'm not I don't know exactly what you're going to tell yourself to not do I mean there's some affirmations in that you can do but I think that it comes back to the point of not looking at today but looking at what it is that you want to end up accomplishing where you want to be let me give you another example of that If a person is trying to lose weight, they may take a picture of what they want to look like and put it there, and then they run into all these obstacles, but what gets them through is looking at that picture and knowing the day is going to come that I'm going to make it there. And what I tell people is that, look, life is tough. But as Zig Ziglar said, if you're tough on yourself, life is going to be a whole lot easier on you. The tougher I am today, the easier it's going to be on me tomorrow. The more disciplined I am today, the, the, the less disciplined I'll have to be in that area tomorrow. Okay, mm-hmm. I can either pay the price now or I'm going to pay the price later. And the price later is going to be a lot worse. The late, great Jim Rohn put it this way. He said there's two types of pain in life. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And you're going to face one or the other. It's just your decision as to which one. Do you want the pain of discipline today or do you want the pain of regret tomorrow? And that's why we want to make absolutely sure that unless we're talking about smoking, we never ever quit. This is the Make It Happen Network. Never, never quit. Strategy number four.